When you think of Antarctica, you probably think of, well, ice mostly. But your second thought might be these guys. Yep, the Antarctic region is home to many interesting animal species. Ranging from the very small to the biggest on Earth. And that's what these scientists are here to study. They've spent weeks following the movements of Antarctic blue whales. We need to do sighting surveys for blue whales to work out their numbers, uh, which is quite tricky. Despite being the biggest animal that's ever lived, whales can be really hard to track because they live underwater and they swim really fast. But scientists have a few tricks up their sleeves, like listening to their songs. And the blue whale call is really distinctive. Uh, it has um, a song that it sings and it has a D call that it sings. They're really low frequency, loud calls. But this boat is also tracking a much smaller Antarctic critter, krill. While they might not be the cutest or most impressive creatures, they are very important. They are the food for a lot of the uh, air-breathing animals we have in the Antarctic, so things like penguins and seals and whales all eat krill. Luckily for the hungry whales, there are heaps of krill. In fact, some experts reckon they're the most common animal in the world. But if that changed, it could be devastating for other creatures. So if the krill go, then that means there'll be no food for all the other animals that we're interested in as well. So understanding how krill will respond to the future ocean is really important. In this lab, Dr Dirk is looking at how the krill would react if the ocean got warmer or absorbed more carbon dioxide. Krill lay eggs into the water. That's how they have babies. So the eggs sink down into the water column. And we found that if we continue to pump lots of CO2 into the ocean, the ocean will become too acidic for those eggs to hatch. Meanwhile, back on land, I've come to check out another krill-eating creature. Yep, penguins. These are Adelis, one of the two penguin species that live on the Antarctic continent. Right now, I'm sitting on Shirley Island. It's just off the coast of Casey Station. The temperature at the moment is pretty close to freezing. So I've got my jacket and my thermals and my fleece on and I'm still feeling a bit chilly. So imagine how these guys are feeling. You know what, they're actually probably doing okay because they've evolved over thousands of years to develop ways to deal with temperatures much colder than this. But something the penguins may not be adapting to as well is us, humans that is. Phoebe Lewis has spent the summer looking closely at penguin eggs, blood, poo and feathers to see if pollution is finding its way into the penguins' bodies. This season the research I'm working on is looking at man-made chemicals that might be accumulating in the penguins, things that are affiliated with plastic and sort of electronics and the kinds of things that we'll find on station. If she does find something, it could be bad news for the other animals of Antarctica. As you probably already know, when one species is in trouble, that can have an effect on the other species in the same environment. That's how ecosystems work. Everything flows on to the next organism in the chain, even humans. By finding out more about all these animals and how they're coping with the changes humans are making to the planet, scientists hope we'll be able to come up with new ways to protect these iconic creatures.